try to put up any barrier that they can to make sure that our people don't get to the voting polls. Despite a century of voter suppression, Native Americans turned out in record numbers for the 2020 elections. We've had um, young students from our high school, from their government class, our local um, BIE school. They came and registered to vote and they voted as a class. The historic turnout played a pivotal role in a number of Senate races and in securing Joe Biden's electoral victory over Donald Trump. In Arizona, for example, which has voted Republican every presidential election since 1996, voters living on the Navajo and Hopi reservations in the Northeast cast around 60,000 ballots, increasing turnout by nearly 20,000 compared to the 2016 election. Exit polls showed these precincts voting heavily for Biden, who flipped the state by a thin margin of 10,000 votes. One of our eldest, and she was 100 years old, and it was her first time voting. A culmination of tireless efforts of Native voting rights activists and landmark court cases. Native Americans won their right to U.S. citizenship a century ago in 1924, but had to fight for the next 40 years to secure the right to vote in every single state. Even then, voting rights on paper didn't translate to voting rights in practice, as Native people faced the same racist tools of voter disenfranchisement that the white establishment used against Black voters, including poll taxes, literacy tests, and vigilante violence and intimidation. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was a major intervention by the federal government to put an end to these forms of voter suppression. But systemic obstacles to voting for Native Americans have persisted to this day. I think the, the most unique is transportation, times um, of voting, the availability um, on our own local homeland. Many Native Americans don't live and vote on sovereign reservations, but voting laws are especially unaccommodating for those who do. Along with having to navigate voting without traditional addresses and IDs, the scarcity of polling places on tribal lands has contributed to some of the lowest voter registration and turnout rates. Our people feel that their voice is not being heard or it doesn't matter that their vote doesn't count. But things may be changing because people on the ground are fighting to change them. In a landmark 2016 case, two Nevada tribes, Walker River Paiute and Pyramid Lake Paiute, successfully argued in federal court that a lack of local voting centers violated their constitutional rights. Our case is actually a case that is cited in um, different laws for other reservations and communities throughout Indian Country to follow. Distance, the inequity at the ballot box. This victory was a watershed moment for Nevada's native tribes, says Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe chairwoman Janet Davis. So to me, that shows the telltale of um, native voter suppression and how since we opened our polling site, how um, we were able to overcome that. The grassroots effort that led to this historic ruling offers a crash course in how people can take democracy into their own hands. Walker River Paiute Chairman Amber Torres says the tribe used a number of strategies to get people engaged, such as inviting candidates to their reservation to address Native issues directly. We set up meet and greets, you know, for um, those who are running for the different positions to come in and talk to our constituents. Leading Democratic presidential candidates took part in a historic Native American presidential forum ahead of the 2020 election, directly addressing tribal issues for the first time. And tribes in Nevada also engaged in extensive outreach efforts across the vast state to ensure all tribe members who want to vote are able to. We just try to get them all the tools that they need um, to make sure to place that vote. Also, you know, trying to line up rides if that's what they need, because transportation is a huge issue. The entire way I got into the poll working field was because our tribe had to sue for access to a polling site. Another crucial facet to this victory for tribe members was winning the right to staff the voting sites with members of their own community, says Nicholas Cortez, who has served as a poll worker since he turned 18. A major push for our tribe was to implement the idea of including our own people in this polling station because our people would be more willing and open to coming to a place where they knew people. Combined grassroots efforts have helped spark a dramatic increase in both voter registration and turnout in Nevada's native reservations. We actually had um, over a 70% increase in registered voters and people that actually came to vote on, on the 
the first time that our polls open. Tribes have won similar victories in other states, but what sets Nevada apart is what happened after the court ruling. In 2017, Nevada's governor signed Senate Bill 492 into law. All of the state's 27 tribes were able to request polling sites on their tribal lands. Being battered by COVID-19, many states enacted measures to make voting in 2020 safer and more accessible, such as expanding people's ability to vote by mail or submit absentee ballots. These measures helped produce that year's record voter participation. But based on the lie that voter fraud cost Donald Trump the election, many states have since rolled back these measures and passed dozens of new laws that make it harder for people to vote in future elections. Nevada bucked this trend, however, by codifying many of those emergency measures into law, such as universal vote by mail, increased drop boxes, and same day voter registration. And previously it was if you register during early voting, then you'll be allowed to vote during general, but you won't be able to vote during early voting. Now it's we can get you registered today and we can get you voting today. And I think that's benefited a lot of people because it allows them to see that change immediately. Nevada has some of the strongest voting rights in the country, and in recent years has expanded the right to vote for the state's approximately 80,000 previously incarcerated people and expanded access to voters with disabilities. But this doesn't mean the fight to ensure everyone has equal access to the ballot is over. The takeaway from working with our county clerks and working with the tribal nations and working with the native-led tribal organizations is that even though Nevada has um, succeeded in expanding access to the ballot, we still have work to do to make voting access fair and equitable for everyone across the state. Carrie Dermick is Nevada State Director for All Voting is Local, a grassroots group that's worked with tribes and voting rights groups to maintain pressure on local county commissioners to respect the legal rights of tribes. We're working to push the Secretary of State's office to provide more oversight to these county clerks to make sure that the county clerks are serving the tribal nations in the same way that they're serving every other resident um, that wants to vote in the county. And while native communities have had record voter turnout in recent years, they have also had low registration rates, according to a report published by the Intertribal Council of Nevada and All Voting is Local. Native Americans had the highest turnout demographically in 2020. They have the lowest voter registration rates. A lack of nearby DMVs to obtain state ID required to vote is one major barrier. In some cases, the DMV is extremely far away from our tribal nations, like in some cases an hour or more. And while Nevada has not passed state laws to restrict voting access based on the big lie, that hasn't stopped voter suppression efforts from being introduced on the county level. Some of the rural counties are attempting to change the election systems to um, paper ballots and hand counting ballots, which would discriminate against voters with disabilities. Uh, potentially discriminate um, against like voters that live, voters or anybody that want to that want to that live in that county because it would increase um, the length of the line in order to vote, and so voters could get frustrated and leave instead of being able to cast their ballot that day. Those efforts have thus far been thwarted, thanks to a big pushback from voting rights advocates. Winning and protecting the right to vote requires the full community's support, says Chairwoman Janet Davis. That is the strategy. You have to get all your community involved, your tribal government involved. It has to be a big push from everyone. Um, you have to have volunteers involved as well. And we went door to door um, getting our voters registered. And while natives have made great strides in recent years and expanding ballot access, tribes still face tremendous challenges overcoming centuries of genocide and settler colonialism. The fear that you're going to be treated as a second-class citizen, and even today we're still trying to fight that or combat it to improve our quality of life because a lot of times people forget about that. They forget that tribes struggle at an unprecedented rate compared to uh, other communities. For The Real News, with Carly Savageau, this is Jessel Noor.